Matt here with Keeping Up YYC. Today we're joined by Adette Lassert with Nine and Three Quarters Coaching. Hi, Adette. How are you? Hi, Matt. I'm great. Good to meet you. Nice to meet you as well. We'll get right into the questions. And first, we'll have you tell us a little bit about your business. Certainly. Um, so my business is Transitional Life Coaching. And it's a little bit of a different take. So think back to when you had graduated from high school and everybody's asking you, so what is your next steps? Where are you going? What are you doing? And there's a lot of pressure and a lot of stress for grads and young adults to choose their path in life. Where are they going? Where is their career? And that sort of thing. So I work with frustrated young ladies who are going through this process of trying to figure out their path, their career, and where their future is going and what's important for them. And we create a path or just a different program that is very specific for each and every girl and we guide them through what is important to them something that really resonates for them and not based on all the social peer pressure family pressure whatever it is and so we create a program that's specific to each and every individual young lady and I walk them through what that looks like. We look at their values and what's important to them and we create, a, we create something that's exciting for them, something they're really um, anticipating getting out and working towards and making it a life that's really worth living. That's, that's awesome. So my question related to that is what age groups do you focus on? Then you say young ladies, what do you, who do you focus on? So I focus on young ladies who are 18 to 24. So they um, are just coming out of high school and they might still be in that final year of high school. Um, they may have transitioned into retail work or may they may have gone on to um, post-secondary. A lot of them are in entry level jobs, but it's just a job. It's not always where they feel comfortable. And sometimes there's pressure to go to post-secondary and choose a path there, but it's often not the path that is true to their heart. Mm -hmm. And where, you know, cause it's what, it's what everybody says I should do. It's where, mm -hmm. you know, somebody says, oh yeah, that job makes lots of money, but you're not really keen or interested in, about, in it. I know when I graduated from high school, I was gonna be an accountant and I was so excited about it. And it worked really hard and I could do those things. But then something happened and it was like, yeah, this just doesn't even resonate with my heart anymore. Mm -hmm. I mean, yeah, I could do math, but I'm not really interested in being an accountant. So mm -hmm. having somebody to, you know, bridge you through that time period is really important. This, this resonates a lot, to be honest, because every, I think everybody feels that pressure because we have this, societal canned method that you need to follow this canned path that you're supposed to follow you get good grades in high school you go to university in whichever subject matter you may have excelled in in your case you said math as an example let's say me i was good at math and chemistry so went into chemical engineering you know you, yeah you're really pushed towards a certain path and that generic path isn't for everyone so exactly it's difficult when people are looking outside of that path because they may not have people to, to talk to about that, people to encourage them, people to bounce those ideas off of. They may not be as um, receptive, I guess, to that. So someone like yourself can really help work through this with some, some young people. And that's what I noticed. I've been doing Girl Guides now for 20, well, well I'm, this is my 29th year of guiding, but 20 years as a leader. And I would often work with the older girls and I would see them finish up the girl-based program and then struggle on their next steps. And this is what kind of led me to that. You know, there's a hole, there's a gap. We can support young ladies better in mm -hmm. taking those next steps forward. Absolutely. I'm impressed to hear that you started helping with Girl Guides when you were still just a small child if you've been doing it for 29 years. <laughs> <I'm> <laughs> I started when I was five. <laughs> yes, that's I started at seven and then um, I left for a few years and came back as an adult. Okay, cool. Yeah. So move on to the next question and I'll ask you, what have you been doing to adapt in this current environment? 
this current environment has forced me to do everything online. And um, a lot of what I do can be done online, but I really miss the connection, the interpersonal things, and I can't do any my seminar workshop sorts of things. So it's just pushing it all online, learning new techniques. Um, I did a online COVID, managing COVID stress because I'm competent in, you know, all of the stress management sorts of techniques. And so I took that and applied it to COVID. And so I created a workshop that you can do online. It's 48 minutes long, but it walks you through some of the things that you can do to help navigate through the stress you might be experiencing during COVID. So I just took everything right online. At the same time, because there's a gap in what I do, I hired a business coach to help me refine what I've been doing and make sure that I'm meeting my market a bit better and that I can meet them where they are and service them in this environment. Well, so you've definitely been hustling in this environment to attack. This <laughs> It's funny, like I talked to some of my coach friends and they're like, yeah, we're working harder now than we've ever worked in our entire lives. There's no sitting back. You're not just sitting on the couch eating bonbons. Mm -hmm. That's very exciting. Very exciting to hear. So my next question is, what can people do right now to support their local businesses? I think the first thing is to educate yourself on who's in the marketplace because a lot of times we don't even think about it. We just drive to the local mall or to the local strip mall and we just pick up what we need from there versus going, who is local? Who, who could I better be choosing from? And knowing that when you choose local, you are actually getting better service because they know our market. They know what's missing. They know the little ins and outs and how to better service you. Whereas somebody who is international, they're not on the same page. They don't know our local market. They don't know the little fluctuations. Calgary gets a bad rap. Um, internationally and, and across Canada is this, you know, oil monster. We're not. People in the city know that, right? We know that, you know, oil and gas is really important, but that other things are also important. And that without the oil and gas industry, all of these other things um, don't exist. So it's about really balancing it out. And you need to educate first, know who's local in your community, and then look at how does that best meet my needs and how can I service, you know, like how can we find the, the right match? Because it is about match, right? Sometimes there's people who are in poverty and it's always about lowest price. And sometimes our local community isn't able to service that well. But where can we find some better matching? Absolutely. We've definitely found that we can find pretty much everything as far as a product and or service locally. As you said, it is about the matching. However, there's a lot of products or services that I never realized I could get locally that I am yeah. now adjusting and my eyes are being opened up to just by looking asking the question, putting it out there and finding people give me an answer. Oh, you can get this from here or there and it's local and it's right by me. So yeah, it's, it's very I, exciting to be educated on this. I mean, the farmer's markets that we have are fabulous resources. And so, you know, spending more time in the farmer's market versus going to the Safeway or Superstore and even looking at, um, I have a neighbor, he has a farm and like so he lives here in the city but he's got a farm and he farms peonies and you can actually buy peonies from him you know so in the fall like you place your order and in the fall he delivers them to you and you can get cut peonies at this time of year you just call him up and order them and he'll get them to you it's amazing okay maybe a silly question what is peonies i don't even know oh it's a flower it's a flower oh. Okay. So okay. I'm a gardener too. <laughs> I see. Okay. I am not, as you can tell. <laughs> it's a, they're, they're the big, they have a, um, a big, beautiful um, bloom on them they're, with lots of petals. And, and that's what makes them really special is they just have these great big, huge blooms on them. And they come in so many different colors. 
Nice. Yeah. Cool. So my last question for you is what tips or tricks can you share with people in relation to your expertise? I think that the big one is around stress management, especially right now. And so I've been doing a lot of sessions um, for stress management and recently did some for Scouts Canada and I have another one for Girl Guides coming up this week. But um, when you're getting really stressed out and you're like, I mean, COVID is really difficult and there's also more, all sorts of different pieces of information that we're being fed. Create a, take a piece of paper and on the piece of paper, um, divide it into three columns. And in the first column on the left, put everything that you know that is within your control, the things that you can control. So during COVID, you can eat healthy, you can get lots of sleep, you can take care of your physical body, you might be able to work from home, all of those things. In the next column to the left, or to the right, put in all the things that you might have influence on. So in the early days, there was things like applying for serve. There was communicating with your boss and going, okay, how can I work from home? This is different. Can we, you know, work something out here? So it's influencing the things that will make a difference in your life. In the third column, put all the things that you have no control over. We have no control over how fast the COVID is spreading. We have no control over how people are going to react to that, whether it be the medical professionals, the, the politicians, whatever that is, those are things we can't control. And then ignore everything that's in that column because it's out of your control. Completely ignore it. Focus in on the other two columns. You can take care of your physical health. You can spend time with your family. You can connect with people that you've never you know, thought to connect with. Um, and then look at where, where can you have influence? And influence might even be writing your politicians you know, and saying, this is what I need. This is, what is what's important. And that's when you know, CERB first came in. People were saying, hey, I got missed on this. Like, but my business is influenced. And because they wrote in, because they rallied themselves, they then got caught in the next round of CERB and with all those other government programs. But that was part of the influence. So we each have opportunity for influence and look at where we can have influence in the situation. But ignore everything that's in that far right column. It's useless. Yeah, so really the only time you should be spending on that column is to get it out there, write it down, and then let it go. Yeah, yeah. Yeah. And then it's interesting with our brains, when we write something down, the brain never actually asks for it back. It's kind of a funny thing about how your brain works. So if you're stressing about something, if you're, if you're, maybe you had a fight with somebody, if you write down all of that stuff, your brain dumps it out and then goes, mm -hmm. okay, I'm good. And it never asks for it back. So you don't have to worry about it ever again. It's just a funny trick how the brain works. Wow, that's, that's very interesting. I'm going to... Take heed of this advice to be totally honest. <laughs> I did not realize that. That's great. That is a fantastic, fantastic answer. And that is the last question that I did have prepared for you, Adet. Really appreciate oh, you taking yeah. the time to join us today. And we oh. do have to you end the interview by just looking at the camera, stating your name and the name of your business, and just ask the people who are watching to keep it local, to keep it YYC. Sure. My name's Adet Lasser. I'm with nine, nine, nine and Three Quarters Coaching. And I believe that you need to keep it local and keep it YYC.